Hello, my name is David Margo, and I'm a lead civil engineer with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. In a previous lecture, we discussed how to enter the stage storage discharge relationship into RMC RFA. In this lecture, I will go over some of the basic methods and equations, along with a few rules of thumb that can be used to calculate spillway discharge rating curves for an RMC RFA reservoir model. During this presentation, we'll cover the following topics. First, we'll start with a quick review of the four basic flow regimes for spillway flow. Next, we'll cover some of the basic equations and methods that can be used to estimate spillway discharge. And lastly, we'll cover some rules of thumb and highlight some common mistakes to avoid. Here are two reference documents that you might find as a useful resource to get additional information. First is Engineering Manual 1110-2-1603, which covers the hydraulic design of spillways. And the second is Engineering Manual 1110-2-1605, which covers the hydraulic design of navigation dams. There are four basic flow regimes for spillway flow. The naming convention for the four regimes gives you an indication of the effects of the headwater and tailwater conditions. When the tailwater is low, such that it has no effect on the discharge through the spillway, this is referred to as a free flow condition. When the tailwater is high, such that it submerges the weir and reduces the discharge through the spillway, this is referred to as a submerged flow condition. Now on the upstream side, when the gate is acting on the upstream water to reduce the discharge through the spillway, this is referred to as a controlled flow condition because the gate is controlling the flow. When the gate is free and clear of the water, this is called an uncontrolled flow condition because the gate is having no effect on the discharge through the spillway. In this presentation, we are only gonna cover two of the common flow regimes for typical high head spillways, which are the free uncontrolled flow regime and the free controlled flow regime. Spillway discharge under free uncontrolled flow conditions is typically calculated using the basic weir equation. In this equation, the discharge depends on a discharge coefficient, C, which can be found in various tables and publications, the length of the spillway crest, L, and the head, H, acting above the spillway crest. When calculating spillway discharge using the basic weir equation, it is very important to always use the effective length of the spillway crest and not the actual physical length. The effective length will always be less than the physical length because of the flow contractions that occur near the spillway abutments and piers. Do not use the physical length of the spillway crest in the weir equation because it will overestimate the discharge. The effective length of the crest depends on the actual physical length, the number of spillway piers, the contraction coefficients for both the abutments and any spillway piers, and the total head above the spillway crest. The equation shown here can be used to calculate the effective crest length, and this equation can be found in Engineering Manual 1110-2-1603. Spillway discharge for a free controlled flow condition can be calculated using the basic orifice flow equation, where the discharge is a function of an orifice discharge coefficient, the opening of the spillway gate, the width of the spillway gate, the coefficient of gravity, and the head acting at the center of the spillway gate opening. When calculating free controlled flow for a gated spillway, the spillway gate width should be entered as the actual physical width of the spillway gate. This is because the effects of the pier and abutment contraction have already been accounted for in the published discharge coefficients. The nominal spillway gate opening is the value that you will typically see reported in the published spillway rating curves because it is easier to operate the dam based on this value. 
The nominal gate opening is the vertical distance from the seat of the spillway gate to the bottom of the gate in its open position. The net gate opening is the value that is used to calculate spillway discharge in the orifice equation because it represents the area that is perpendicular to the direction of the flow that is passing through the spillway gate opening. The net opening is the minimum distance between the bottom of the spillway gate and the spillway crest. This minimum distance comes from a line that is perpendicular to the curved spillway crest and also intersects the bottom of the gate. Estimating the net gate opening requires some understanding of the geometry and the trigonometry. The nominal and net gate openings are typically not the same value, so make sure you are always using the net gate opening when calculating spillway discharges using the orifice equation. Published discharge coefficients for tainter gates and for other types of gates can be found in the engineering manuals and associated references. In this case, the discharge coefficients for tainter gates were developed generally from a set of physical model studies that each had three or more spillway gates in operation. The discharge coefficients for operation of a single gate would be a bit lower than these values because of the effects of peer contractions. The coefficients are believed to be reasonably accurate for gate opening ratios less than about 0.6. Calculated discharge estimates will generally be less accurate outside of these parameters. Always keep in mind it's important to understand where the coefficients come from and what, if any, limitations might exist. There are three important zones to consider when evaluating discharge for a gated spillway. The stable, uncontrolled flow zone occurs when the spillway gate is clear of the water surface profile such that the discharge will be governed by the basic weir equation. The unstable orifice flow condition occurs when the gate opening is large relative to the total head on the spillway crest. This creates an unstable flow condition that typically results in vibration of the gates and machinery and also surging of the water upstream of the gates. The stable orifice flow condition occurs when the gate opening is relatively small compared to the total head on the spillway crest. As a rule of thumb, the transition between unstable and stable orifice flow occurs when the gate opening is roughly 62% of the total head on the spillway crest. This will vary for each project and is only a rule of thumb. Here is a graphical depiction of the three zones we just discussed. Again, the stable orifice flow condition occurs when the gate opening is small relative to the total head on the spillway crest. Stable free flow occurs when the spillway gate is clear of the water surface profile and the unstable orifice flow occurs in between. In practice, when operating dams, we would generally want to avoid gate openings that could produce an unstable orifice flow condition. These types of plots can be developed using the rule of thumb of 62.5% of the total head to estimate the transition between stable orifice flow and unstable orifice flow. And water surface nap profiles for the spillway can be used to estimate the transition between stable free flow and the unstable orifice flow. The important thing to remember is that the unstable orifice flow condition is still an orifice flow condition and we should still use the orifice flow equations to estimate the spillway discharge. There's one more important zone to consider when calculating and especially when extrapolating spillway discharge rating curves for gated spillways. For most typical gated spillways, the flow regime will transition back into an orifice flow condition or a free controlled flow regime as the reservoir stage rises above the design pool. It is important to use the correct orifice flow calculations to estimate discharge capacity at these stages. Because if a free flow condition is assumed and the Weir equation is used, the discharge will be overestimated, resulting in an unconservative stage frequency curve. So be sure to take this into account when extrapolating discharge rating curves, especially for gated spillways.
This concludes the presentation and overview of discharge rating curves for spillways. Let us know if you have any questions.